people are saying negative things, you're going to win six games. It's the same thing uh, if people are picking you to do great things. All of that stuff is based on past performance and has nothing to do with you know, present day. Uh, you know, you got to earn it all over again. You know, it's a clean slate. You start over. Todd Boyd was the ACC Player of the Year last year and thrown a single touchdown pass. This year. So, a lot of work to do. We got a lot of boxes to check off in our preparation uh, process, and, and uh, we got to work. You know, in November is when it means something to me because then it's based on you know actual performance and reality. And uh, I think our team has the right kind of uh, mindset when it comes to all that stuff. Uh, so questions out there. Hello, Coach. Alex Dodd, Dodd Sports Network, Greenville. Yeah, Dodd, sure. Yes, sir. Um, last season, Venables, the higher of him, really seemed to charge up the defense, and they shaved five points off of the opponent's points per game average. And how do you look on improving that this season with the young defensive backs? Well, this time last year, we were in major, major work in progress uh, defensively. Uh, you know, it was... It was scary, actually. I said that, you know, several times. It, it probably wasn't going to be pretty early, but we'd get better. And we did get better. Uh, it really culminated with a, just an incredible performance defensively in our bowl game. And, uh, you know, that's the expectation. Uh, the, the big thing is, is we have grown up in the trenches. Uh, last year, we, we had one senior, no juniors. And so they were all freshmen and sophomores. And uh, we, the one senior we had for the Falcons now, so now we're Fast forward a year later, we've got all juniors and, and some key sophomores. So uh, just really excited about the development of those guys and also our linebackers. I, I really feel like our front seven is is going to be a strength of our team. You know, they were a question mark on our team last year. And, uh, you know, when, when this season is over, I'll be incredibly disappointed if our front seven is, is not one of our main strengths, if not the strength of our football team. Uh, and you can be good up front uh, defensively, it, it sure solves a lot of problems. So I'm really, really excited about uh, the guys coming back, how they work, the competition, the depth, the talent, the experience. Um, you know, we just got a lot of work to do to get ready now. But, you know, we should be much improved in year two under Coach Reynolds. Uh, we still got some work to do in the secondary, uh, but, but hopefully those guys up front uh, will allow us to then buy a little time with those guys. Hi, Coach. Uh, Matt Park from the uh, Syracuse IMG Sports Network. And you'll be the flag bearer uh, coming in as far as the first ACC uh, game in the Dome. <laughs> 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 but you'll be representing the best of the ACC. And, and your thoughts on playing in a Dome, first of all, and, and uh, kind of the, the way you'll come in there in the game? You know, I'm excited about it. Uh, I'm not excited about being y'all's first ACC game. I'm not excited about being y'all's homecoming either. Uh, there's going to be a lot of orange uh, in the dome. But, you know, I've always, uh, you know, wanted to go up to Syracuse and, and experience that. Uh, I know it's going to be an incredibly difficult place to play. But, you know, listen, we're excited about having Syracuse and Pittsburgh uh, join this conference and look forward to Louisville coming in next year. I just think it's, you know, too three uh, really uh, you know, good teams on the rise. Syracuse and Pitt have a ton of tradition and history. Uh, you know, so you know, I, I really like uh, what's going on in both of those programs in the last couple of years. And again, it's just a, it's just a, a great thing to have them join this league. So look forward to competing with them on the field. Look forward to uh, making uh, my first trip up to, to Syracuse. I really don't know where it's at. I know it's in New York. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's about as far as I can go from a geography standpoint. I, I gotta, I gotta figure out Middle where it State. is. Where is it? Right in the middle. In the middle. Okay. I've been to Buffalo. Uh, that's kind of the top. That's the west. So kind of the middle. All right. Did you say you had a recruiting adventure when you went to New York City? Did you say yeah. That? Oh yeah. I had a few. I, I, I've, uh, you know, we recruited Chad Kelly up there. Got a chance to tour Niagara Falls. I always thought I might go with my wife one day, but I got to go with Chad Kelly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then this year I got a chance to to go into Brooklyn, and uh, me and Dan Brooks, uh, it, that would have been a great reality TV show. You know, listen, Duff Dynasty has nothing on me and Dan Brooks going to Brooklyn, I promise you. Uh, that was uh, quite an experience for us, but so much fun, and uh, we're able to sign a great young player named uh, Ebenezer Ogadeco. All the way back to the podium. 
Coach, basketball's got, of course, the ACC versus Big Ten challenge. It seems like this year for football, with the exorbitant number of ACC versus SEC teams, you got, you got two of them. Is there an added pressure, not only you guys, but maybe the rest of the league, too, seeing as how the rest of the nation views the SEC as the end-all, be-all of college football, to maybe win your share and show that the league stacks up? And yeah, no question. I mean, you got to win those games. Uh, the SEC is, is kind of, you know, carrying the torch right now, uh, and they've earned that. I mean, it's, it's that simple. They, they've earned it on the field, and uh, we got to do a great job uh, of winning our share of those games. And, and I, I think that you know this conference is well positioned uh, to make a great run on the national scene, and uh, you know we hope to be a major part of that. This, this is our this is our third SEC game in a row. We're like the SEC North Division or something. Uh, I mean, it, it's the third game in a row for us against that conference. It's the third top ten team in a row. So, uh, you know, we look forward to that that competition. Our conference competes tremendously with them in every area, whether it's on the field, uh, in recruiting, uh, bowl games. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity uh, for our league. But, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, we've got to win our share of those games so that, uh, you know, we can – uh, maybe change that perception, but uh, we, we, we're very proud of, of where we are and where we're going as a conference. And uh, you know, our win in the bowl game was a, was a huge step for us. Uh, Louisville's not the conference yet, but their win over Florida was a was a, a, a great win. And uh, you know, that's the kind of wins you got to have, you know, more often than not, to position yourself where you need to be on the national scene. And you know, the SEC has produced that. 13 and 0, 12 and 1 team. But somehow or another, there's been three or four, maybe five teams that have really kind of carried the banner. And one of them has been 13 and 0, 12 and 1, and, and they've earned the right to play for the overall title. And then they've won it on the field. And we just have not quite produced that dominant team yet. Uh, hopefully, that's coming very soon. And I really feel like it is. And uh, you know, we're excited to, to be a part of this whole thing that's going on in this conference. Coach. Jimmy Riggs, News 14 Carolina, and Time Warner Cable. Um, as you were leaving the photo opportunity outside and coming back inside, uh, I heard you going back and forth with your uh, SID about this being the very first time that your team was picked uh, to win the conference uh, since you got here. Can you tell me what was going through your mind as soon as just the SID confirmed that this was the first time and as far as where you've been able to bring this program from, from, from day one to where it is now? Yeah, well, the only thing that's going through my mouth, trying to figure out why me and Al Golden were standing out there taking pictures. I, I didn't really, I wasn't in the boot on that. Uh, but uh, so that's that's how that conversation came up. But you know, look, it's a it's a compliment uh, because again, you know, I guess people look at what's going on in the past and they say, hey, these guys are doing a good job, and you got to pick somebody. Uh, so you know, we appreciate the the, the compliments, and uh, it's a compliment to our players. It's a compliment to our players for, for how hard they worked, how they performed on the field, how they represent our program. Uh, that people would say, hey, you know what, those guys uh, you know, have a chance to be a good team. That's really all it means. Um, and but uh, I, I, I just like when people predict us to not do well. Uh, I really just don't pay a lot of attention to that because I, I understand that the games are settled on the field in between the lines. And, uh, We've got a lot. We're, we're a long way away from a championship team. A long way away. We we got a long way to go. A lot of work to do. And you know, I really hope that, that we will be strong. I mean, that's that's our goal. That's our goal from Pasadena. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with dreaming big. Uh, so, uh, but it's a long way. You know, that's that's a mountain top up there. And, you know, my focus is down here trying to trying to continue to climb and, and be about our business on a daily basis. Coach Bob Holly from Raleigh, uh, New Hopkins got a lot of balls for you last year. Uh, obviously, you have Sammy Watkins back and presumably poised for a banner year. Would you talk about some of the receivers uh, that are coming up uh, that you're expecting to run, you know, run routes and get into the seams of the defenses? And what's their chemistry with Ty Boyd like? Yeah. Well, we, we've got four juniors that have played an awful lot of football for us the last two years. That that whole group came in as freshmen together, and that's Sammy Watkins, uh, Martavis Bryant, Sharon Peake. And Adam Humphreys. Those four guys have all had huge moments for us over the last two years. We've made big plays and big games. And you know, Adam Humphreys was, was 
you know, nobody really talks about Adam, but, you know, we, we won 11 games with kind of Sammy having an off year, if you will, and uh, Adam Humphrey's just, he just filled right in. You know, in our bowl game, Sammy got hurt. Uh, hey, Adam just goes out there and plays. I really, I was more worried when we lost our tackle. Uh, but that's the kind of confidence that I had in Adam Humphrey. So I think those four guys uh, have a chance to, uh, to really step up and, and, and be special for us this year as a group. You know, we're going to have to have some help from a couple of young guys filling in uh, from a depth standpoint. But, but those four guys will cross train. Uh, they, they can play multiple positions. They, they understand our system. Uh, they're just like Taj, the one in year three of the system. So, and, and then Martavis Bryant's a guy that has finally bought in and has committed to doing things the Clemson way. And, and I, I just believe you read what you sow and, and I, I, how he's worked this spring and this summer. I, I think that young man is, is pushed for a great year. So I feel really good about our receiver position. Uh, Javon Hopper's a young man from up in North Carolina that will be a redshirt freshman. He's another guy that I think early on will probably wow a few folks. He's, he's a long way away from being a, a, a complete guy, but, but he's kind of got a little wow factor to him and, and will probably catch some, some some eyes early, and, uh, and we'll see uh, where we go with some of these freshmen that will also be in camp. Coach Jim Connors from News 14 Carolina and Time Work Cable. You alluded to Sammy's off year. How confident are you that you're going to see the Sammy of a couple seasons ago? And have you visited with him and put put together why you know things were the way they were last year? Just injuries, or was there a little more? Yeah, you know, he really he was very productive. Uh, we only played about seven games, and that's the problem. You know, he missed a couple games, uh, you know, with suspension, and then he gets hurt, had a little kidney problem, missed the Boston College game, and then we have a, got a couple games where you, the, game, the score gets out of hand. He only plays about a half, and then you get to the bowl game, he's out. So, you know, but if you just look at when he was on the field and his production, he, he was very productive. He just was inconsistent with – uh, there was no continuity because he missed a lot of time. So the biggest thing is just him being on the field. And I think it was great for him because his freshman year, everything came really easy. Everything just went perfect. It went exactly, you couldn't have written a movie script better uh, than the way it was his freshman year. And then all of a sudden, it doesn't go as smooth. You're battling injuries. you got this and that. And, you know, people are criticizing you. And you got a lot of things. But, man, what, a, what an opportunity to grow as a young person. And I think that's exactly what he did. He's channeled it the right way. Uh, he's had a great spring. He's an excellent leader for us. He's probably the low, most low-maintenance player that we have on the roster. The guy's just a blue-collar worker. And I can promise you he's incredibly driven to go have a great year. The biggest thing is he's got to be on the field. You know, he stays healthy, and, and he's out there. Uh, that ball will find its way to him because uh, he is, uh, you know, Sammy Watkins. He's a special football player. And, and, uh, you know, I'm excited about his potential this year. That we're on time. I do have to ask. Uh, we got Taj upstairs in our ACCDN phone booth to sing yesterday. He's saying our church is crazy. Have you seen it? What's your review of Taj as a singer? I have not seen it, uh, but my review is probably not very good because he can't dance very well either. So, um, you know, I, 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 he did, he did uh, kind of sing a lot. We had 1,200 ladies at our ladies' clinic on Saturday. Yeah. And uh, he came down singing "Ain't No Mountain High Enough," and, um, and it was uh, it wasn't very good. But, <laughs> I, I, I didn't see that. I look forward to seeing that. I, I also understand that he proposed to somebody and sang all within the first ten minutes of his arrival here. So, uh, but that's Todd. You know, he's he's like that all the time. Every time you see Todd Floyd, he's got a smile for you. He's got a hug for you. And, uh, you know, he's just, to me, what, what's great about college football. And we're sure going to miss him. I wish we could you know, sign him to a new contract and, and, you know, like the NFL, just keep him, like, forever, like Peyton Manning or something. But, unfortunately, we got about five months left with him, and, and, and we got to go our separate ways. But, uh, you know, we, we sure have enjoyed uh, our time with him. And, and uh, this will be a this will be a season to remember, no doubt. That was me, head coach of the Clemson